Welcome back guys, it's Matt King Quarter here with another computer video for you. It's been a long time, I know, but I decided to finally get around to making one and I've picked up a lot of computers in between the time I last made a video and now and uh, this is one of them, a Bondi Blue 233 MHz iMac running Mac OS 8.5. It's kind of a mouthful there, but I managed to get it out somehow. This system is really cool. <laughs> I instantly fell in love with it. And uh, although there was one problem I had with it, well, two problems, okay. It doesn't have a floppy drive. And secondly, I didn't have any software for it, or so I thought, until recently I went looking through my software collection and noticed that I do indeed have quite a lot, main of which is this game. Close Combat, A Bridge Too Far, my favorite strategy game of all time, has the Mac version right on the disc, which is absolutely awesome. There's that. I have Exile. I have Riven. I recently scored Civilization II from a, uh, from a thrift store. StarCraft. Sim Tower, another thrift store find. Warcraft II, another thrift store find. Uh, yeah, and I have tons and tons of CDs over on that wall over there uh, that probably have a lot of Mac versions in there. In addition to all this, I recently went ahead and bought a copy of Microsoft Office 98. Because what's a computer without a word processing suite, right? That's what I think, at least, because what am I going to show you unless I show you games and utilities? So let us go ahead and take a closer look at the system itself, but right before I do that, I know I sound really excited here, and before I do anything else, I'm going to move these games and show you one more cool thing that happened. Now, I know what you're thinking. What could be cooler than an iMac? Well, for instance, how about another iMac? <laughs> I recently found this one in a trash heap on the side of the road where the owner apparently didn't want it but was kind enough to put a fresh install of Mac OS on it Mac, o Mac OS X, sorry and leave the original OS CD in the device this was in the tray <laughs> isn't that incredible? of course I added the label in the case but I have the original operating system for this thing if I want to restore it um, Two, I will have to do that eventually, but right now I'm having some trouble with it, which will be a different video. Now, as I said a little while ago, I have a problem with this system. It doesn't have a floppy disk drive, and that's a big problem, because if I keep any sort of documentation on this thing, I can't move it off of here, and I can't move things onto the system easily without writing disks. Now, I don't know that this system has a rewritable disk drive, or a drive capable of reading disks that have been written because um, a lot of the older drives will not read modern disks that are written um, strangely enough it should be able to in theory but I have not tested it yet instead I went right out to eBay and ordered this thing a Bondi Blue, fl Bondi Blue floppy drive and uh, unfortunately I can't get it to work because the Macintosh does not op uh, recognize it with the software. It needs some kind of software and VST went out of business. However, Fortune smiled on me again and recently I found this <laughs> at my local Goodwill. Uh, yeah! A teak floppy drive specifically designed for Macintoshes with the software and everything in it brand new. Yeah, what kind of luck is that, huh? That is stupid amounts of good luck. Not only that, but I also scored this really nifty floppy disk holder while I was there. Yeah, I know, tell me about it. Who has luck like that? I have no idea. Okay, so I've gone ahead and installed the floppy drive on there, installed the software for it, and it should be all basically plug and play. All I have to do now is turn it on and demonstrate the system. So that is exactly what I'm gonna do right now is turn on the system. Now, there's two power buttons, one here and one there. If you're too lazy to reach across and push this one, you could always hit that one. So, 
Boink! Go ahead and hit that, and it starts up. Boo. I love the way this system works. It's just so cool. I've never owned anything like this. I will move the camera up so you can see it in better detail once it boots into the system, but I'm letting it count its RAM and start up the monitor and do everything it needs to do basically uh, before I go ahead and do that. I really enjoy the classic versions of Mac OS um, a lot more than I enjoyed Mac OS X. Like I said, I'm not a Mac user. I grew up on Windows. I've never used Mac before these things. And uh, after playing with the Mac OS X iMac and the Mac 8.5 iMac, which is a classic variant, I like the classic Mac OS better. I don't know why, but it's just more friendly to me as a non-Mac user. I can walk up and kind of use it. It, I will, I will be dead honest though. It confused the fuck out of me at first, and it took me a while to uh, kind of get used to it. So let me move the camera up, and we will look at it in greater detail. Okay, so I'm back, and I have the camera focused on the iMac as best as possible. Obviously, the refresh rate does not quite match the shutter speed, but uh, you're just going to have to deal with it as best as possible. I apologize again, but hopefully this is good enough to get the idea across. Um, Mac OS 8.5 is kind of an attractive little operating system. I like it a lot. It reminds me of Amiga OS from what I've seen of it so far. Uh, with the top bar, here and when you open this stuff you get this nice little box with the close button on the left hand side instead of the right hand side like most other operating systems which is kind of cool I really enjoy that the similarity makes me wonder why Mac didn't really sue Commodore but that's a discussion for a different day I'm sure um, when I first used this it confused the hell out of me because I didn't know how to close programs really well um, and I didn't know where the programs were located, like how to actually get into your programs. I figured there'd be like a start button, but I had no idea it'd be the Apple button here. And uh, I didn't know that your programs don't appear in this either. Maybe there's a way to add it to this list, but I haven't figured out how. And uh, that is kind of archaic. It's really weird feeling. This is a really odd operating system. Another weird thing is, though... It didn't have any built-in screensavers. Now, a computer that has a built-in CRT monitor in it, and it's all proprietary stuff, it's not like you can just plug another CRT into it, should probably have a screensaver. That's a slight oversight on Apple's part, I think. So I went ahead and dug around in my software, and this is actually what turned me on to the fact that a lot of the 90s software has the Apple version on it, is that After Dark, a CD I picked up for Windows 98 that was at the local Goodwill, had the Mac version on there. Uh, and I thought that was really freaking cool because I can turn on the Toaster screensaver and have that as my screensaver, which is really great. Because <laughs> that is my screensaver on windows at the moment. Another weird quirk in this system is that if you have a CD inserted you can't manually eject it with the button in the front of the machine. You have to go into here and click eject and then it pops open the tray. That's really strange coming from PCs because on a PC the buttons on the front do as much as the software. Now in order to get to your programs, this is a little bit different from Windows and other operating systems I've used, such as Linux, you have to go into the hard drive, like Windows 3.1 or Amiga, mainly like Amiga, go into, well you have to find it on here, there's a couple of different places it can be, it can be out here if it's like a game, or in my case, applications, and then there it gets you Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, or Excel. Like I said, I installed Microsoft Word 98, which is the Macintosh edition, 
and uh, it's really, really cool to have Microsoft Word on this Macintosh. As you'll notice, the usual paperclip helper dude is not present, but instead you have this little Macintosh. I'm going to close them out there, and he waves goodbye. Very nice, very, very nice, very nice. Does it... It doesn't expand more than that, which irritates me a little bit. Doesn't it do anything? Well, that was good, eh? Boink, boink, come on. Ugh. Okay, well, you get the idea. Oh, wait, maybe it'll let me do it. Aha! There we go, full, full page view. It's Microsoft Office 98 and uh, 97 basically. What is there to say except on the Macintosh and as you saw it's a little bit differently because it works like a Macintosh. You can see your desktop and stuff like that. It's a little bit bizarre. Um now this really confused the hell out of me. There's no close buttons or anything up here. You'd think that this closes it out. It doesn't. See how the Microsoft Office is still open up here? Yeah. You have to go up into file and quit. That is weird. Okay? That is strange. Whoever thought that was a good idea was on drugs or something. Because that is bizarre. I just... <laughs> it's weird, okay? It's just a strange idea. It's kind of cool, but I mean it's weird at the same time. Now, uh, I'd like to demonstrate some of the games for this system and go ahead and do that right now okay I love the way the games look on this system because they are like super crisp they just look really good it's not a bad system I really like it a lot I like the Macintosh the iMac a lot and I can't wait until I find a power Mac so let's go ahead and play a little bit of this. Um, human campaign. Okay. Build four farms, built a barracks. Let's go ahead and do that. Oh, by the way, no MIDI here. This is actual CD audio. How cool is that? Macintosh version used the CD audio by default, whereas the Windows version and DOS version used MIDI by default. Although, the um, soundtrack was on the CD, so you could listen to it. Alternatively, turn it on in the options. Die! Like I said before, Sim Tower runs on this system, and it runs really well. I absolutely love this game. I don't know what it is about it, but it is strangely addictive to play. And just managing the inner sort of economy of your building, keeping your people happy, and giving them everything you, they need. Oh crap, I'm out of money. Speaking of economy. <laughs> Just kind of keeping everything running is uh, difficult and weirdly soothing at the same time. It's like playing SimCity, but in a small microcosm. It is, it's just a really cool concept. I love it. It's an awesome game. Uh, if you don't know about it, then go ahead and try it, because I assure you, you will fall in love with it. It's one of those games you just get up early in the morning and play, and with a cup of coffee and you just stare at it blurry eyed as the days wither away in the simulation and rain comes 
and night comes and day comes and you get a little bit more money as you see there I just got some more cashola and the goal of the whole game is to get yourself a five-star skyscraper or tower since it is sim tower yeah check it out it is freaking amazing obviously see my people are not too happy here and birds seem to kind of be going ballistic I don't know what the hell's going on but yeah Now this is my favorite strategy game of all time, probably. It's Close Combat, A Bridge Too Far, the second in the series. It is so cool. I played this game in the demo form over and over and over as a kid and absolutely loved it. So when I finally got a copy off eBay, I was ecstatic. I played it like crazy. I absolutely love this game. It's a top-down strategy as you see, but it's troop-based. You get little guys that are groups here that specialize in different things. Different weapon sets, I mean. And, uh, and they actually respond with morale and, you know, ammo and things like that. So they can run out of ammo. It's basically the first modern strategy game. And it's really freaking cool. As you can see, I'm kind of pinned and it's not going too well. Um, didn't really think this out too well at all. Uh, but holy crap, this is a cool game and it runs really well on this Macintosh. And I absolutely love it for that. Well, that's about it for the iMac, the Bondi Blue iMac from 1998. I know I didn't cover floppy disk drives and inserting those into the iMac and what happens, but it's really simple. Basically, you just put in a either Apple format diskette into the drive or a FAT16 format diskette, and it will read that and make use of that immediately. So it is really convenient for that, for transferring files and such to PCs and other Macs. Uh, I don't have another Mac other than this Mac OS X one. Um, so my main beef was transporting it to Linux and Windows machines. I'm Mad King Corduroy, and this is Transcendental Airwaves. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching. There will be more in the future, so be sure to like and subscribe. And leave a comment if you have one, because I enjoy hearing from you guys. And I know it's been a long time, so hopefully this will kind of make up for that. Thanks again.